Hello and uh, welcome to my first uh, how-to video. Uh, today we'll be talking about Paceler, uh, PRTG Traffic Grapher. Uh, this video here that we're doing right now is uh, part one of two, so there'll be a follow-up uh, video. Today's agenda will cover, first of all, who I am, and then we'll uh, discuss the company who wrote the software called Paceler, and who they are and why this product became free. Uh, and then we'll uh, talk about why we sh you should use this tool and understand uh, the network landscape in terms of uh, I got a couple of network diagrams that I'll go over uh, that would highlight the usage of such a tool in, in what circumstances uh, and then uh, we'll also talk about the tool requirements as we talk discuss the, the network diagrams and then later on in, in part two of two we'll go over the tool itself now that's me uh, my name is Pierre Marseille I'm an IT manager for a software company. Uh, I've been in the uh, computer industry now for a very long time, and I tend to uh, consider myself a generalist. Now, for me, a generalist is someone who knows, who's not an expert in anything per se, but definitely knows enough about most things to carry an intelligent conversation. Now, the purpose of this tutorial is to educate other generalists who may not be familiar with this tool or whose networking background is somewhat limited. Now I know that what I'll be saying in this presentation uh, will make some experts uh, cringe because what I may say may not be 100% accurate. However, the purpose of this tutorial is to keep things very simple and the idea is to convey the concepts and demonstrate the tool in action. So if you want to know more about a concept, I suggest you do some more research on your own. Now Paceler is a German software company uh, that definitely makes great software and affordable products. Uh, now the reason this product is free right now is because uh, Paceler is no longer developing or supporting the software. Uh, they decided to refocus their energy on other products and in the process this uh, product here uh, was pushed to the side. However, uh, Thanks to them, the product is still available somewhere on the internet. It's available on CNET.com for you to download, uh, and it's free. And it's uh, it's about 29 meg downloads. So it's not very big, and it only run, the software only runs on a Windows platform. Now, why would you want to use this tool? Well, this product only does a few things, but it does them very well. I personally have not seen the present the information presented in the manner in which they present it at least not in a free product uh, and definitely the product can it can be a great tool to help you answer some of the questions like uh, is my internet link saturated uh, is my cloud application slowness due to my internet link how much network traffic is my custom application generating uh, how much network traffic is going through the internet port of my server uh, who in the office is using a lot of internet bandwidth and am I close to going over my monthly internet cap for those that, that do have caps so first let's look at a simple network diagram uh, in this diagram here we have uh, nothing fancy just uh, a, a bunch of PCs hooked up to a, a, a switch a mounted switch uh, that are hooked up to a firewall and then that firewall is hooked up to a uh, an ISP router at their location uh, and then uh, through a T1 goes to the internet and surf the web okay uh, now this particular customer has a uh, T1 as an internet link. Uh, as you can see here, there's quite a few different types of internet links a customer could get. Uh, the reason people get a T1 sometimes is because they want to have the same upload and download speed. So uh, a T1 has a 1.5 megabits per second download and upload speed. Uh, a cable connection and DSL will have uh, a much faster download but a much slower upload usually one-tenth of the download speed and then for those that are interested in a uh, faster upload speed but also a decent download speed and a T1 is not sufficient for them uh, they can group a whole bunch of T1s together to form what they call a bonded T1 setup so that uh, it appears as one big pipe for you to surf through okay now for the purpose of using this software, there are some requirements that need to be done. Okay, for one thing, as I highlighted over here, uh, you need to have a managed switch. Now, a managed switch uh, means that you can configure the switch. Uh, for one of the things you want to do is to be able to uh, what we call port mirroring. Now, port mirror mirroring means that 
you have a source port and you have a destination port okay so what you want to do is you want to tell the switch itself to echo or duplicate whatever information goes through this port here I want it to be echoed to another port on the switch so in this example here we're saying mirror port 1 to port 24 okay and port 24 is the port that I'm using with my monitoring PC to monitor the traffic that really goes through the internet because if the purpose is to monitor everything that goes on uh, all over my T1 here and because this is a relatively simple setup there's only one thing that can really use up your internet connection it's whatever goes through this port so any PC here must go through this port in order to get to the firewall and in order to get to the internet okay uh, so in order for you to be able to do this uh, to, to install the software obviously you need a Windows PC uh, which has to be of decent power and memory uh, and you are going to need two Ethernet cards now one of the Ethernet cards is obviously is to monitor or listen to what goes on on port 24 because that's the port that's being uh, where the data is being copied uh, mirrored to and the other port is uh, the other network card is used for me to, from uh, my PC at my desk to be able to connect to that PC and either remote control it via a remote control software or do a remote desktop connection to the PC so I can take over the PC and use the tool from there this way I don't have to walk over every single time I want to see what goes on okay so that's a uh, what I call a, a simple network setup now the next setup is a little more complicated so obviously uh, Acme software here has uh, I'm sorry Acme furniture has a uh, spent some money on the IT budget and uh, they've decided to uh, have host their own uh, FTP and uh, web server so what they've done is they've created a what we call a DMZ zone and they've hooked up these devices to a switch that is connected to the firewall and for whatever reason here they've decided also to put a standalone PC hooked up to this switch here uh, so that the PC can serve the web without going through the firewall okay now in this case uh, the network uh, layout is a little, a little different okay but obviously the focus is still the same you want to know what goes on over your internet connection so what one could say is well why not monitor just the port that goes to my ISP router here uh, so that I can see everything that goes on so yes that's definitely an option uh, but what that will do is it, that it will show you anything coming out from this PC anything coming from the firewall and anything coming from these two uh, the servers here you will see everything going through however it will not tell you per se who on the network is using the internet a lot because what happened is every computer that uses the internet they come out through the switch to the firewall and then the firewall substitutes the IP address of the PCs with its own so by the time the the, the network traffic from any of these PCs leaves the firewall it appears as it comes from the firewall itself so if I want to if I want to know well who's using my internet bandwidth I cannot tell you that it, which PC it is so that's why I have to have another another port that is monitored which is again the port one on my switch here which is connects to my firewall so that <clears throat> I can monitor both this one and this one and I can correlate the information so if I see a big spike at 10 o'clock sharp on the link over here I can look on the, mon the the link that's monitored over here to see if I have also a correlation at 10 o'clock because if there is this if the same spike exists here and the one over here then I then it guarantees it tells me who it is right then I know that the focus is somebody here who's for surfing the web but if I see a big spike at 10 o'clock here <clears throat> without even looking at the IP addresses and then I look down here and I don't see that big spike then that tells me that it's either this PC or one of these two servers here that's generating this uh, spike in traffic okay so for this kind of setup <clears throat> the requirements are as follows uh, you need to manage switch because for each switch it has to do port mirroring so you need to do port mirroring on this switch over here and you do obviously need to do port mirroring on this side and the computer that's going to do the, the monitoring needs to have three Ethernet cards two cards to do the network monitoring and again one card that you can use so that from my PC I can connect to that PC okay via again an RDP or remote controls uh, remote control software so as you can see uh, this is probably a more representative connection uh, 
I mean, network layout for a what we call mid-size uh, size companies, and so because smaller companies may tend not to have that kind of setup. Uh, but uh, for mid-size to even larger companies, uh, larger companies we, we would have an even more extensive uh, network diagram than this. Okay, so that sums it up pretty much for the uh, for the drawings and explaining explaining the requirements. Uh, the next part of the demo now will focus more on the, the the tool itself. So how to install the software and what to do with it. Okay, thank you.